Hey everybody, it's Justice for Comics. It's Wednesday afternoon. It's time for new comic book day review of books that are coming out next Wednesday. Uh, this will be September 8th. So we're going to use Midtown uh, to give you guys a look at the books that are coming out next Wednesday. This will give you some time to plan ahead, see what you want to make sure you pick up. So let's jump into it here. We'll start off with uh, Dark Horse. New book, Last Flight Out, number one. Uh, just the one cover. I don't know, that might be worth grabbing. I don't know if this is a mini series. Uh, let's look at the solicitation, see if it says anything as to whether it's a mini series or not. Earth rendered uninhabitable. Humanity has chosen to evacuate to the stars, but with just 24 hours left until la the last arc. Designed to evacuate Earth's residents, leaves forever its designer's estranged daughter goes missing. Okay. Doesn't indicate whether it's a miniseries or not, but it could be a good read. So that one you may want to just pick up just to see if it's any good. Uh, the other one that might be worth grabbing, May's book number one. This is a Jeff Lemire property. Art and writing by Jeff Lemire. I'm not the biggest fan of Jeff Lemire's art. Um... Might be worth grabbing at least the first issue. Give it a try. I do like the B cover by Sorrentino. That one's pretty cool. Uh, I don't care for, I think, the A covers by Jeff Lemire. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a big fan of his artwork, but to each his own. I, I like the B cover a little bit better, so that's the one I would grab. Uh, it does it for Dark Horse that I noticed. Let's move on to DC. Um, not been picking up Catwoman, Batman Catwoman, because of Tom King. Uh, Batman Fear State Alpha. I did grab one of these through Things from Another World for pretty cheap. I think 4 or $5. So Midtown has it for 14 There was a couple exclusive, you know, there was a couple sites like Comic Mint. Frankie's, I think, was selling this as well. It is a C cover foil cardstock. It's a beautiful cover by Matina. I mean, it's... Really, really nice. I like it. So, I don't know. I, I would pick it up if you haven't already. Batman number 112. A lot of different covers here. Obviously, the B cover looks nice by, by Molina. I think that's the one I pre-ordered. The Jorge Molina one. I always I always get the A cover as well, typically. I have that as my Midtown pull list item. Uh, remember, if you're going to do a pull list with Midtown, I think you have to have at least 10 titles subscribed to. Uh, to be able to do that. Uh, there's also a, a D cover, incentive cover, by Kale No. Notice the price, $45. Bucks. Um, I did see some pre-sales. I think this is a 1 in 25, so the, the price seems a little steep. It could be a 1 in 50, though. I, I, I have to check again. I, I thought it was a 1 in 25, but it, it could be a 1 in 50. Uh, Black Manta, number 1. Couple different covers. The A cover is kind of cool. I like a purple cover. Um, there's also a C cover, incentive cover for forty dollars. Again, I don't know if that's a one in twenty-five. It might be a one in twenty-five. Uh, it's okay. I don't know. I don't. I, they're not sold out, so I don't think anybody's dying to pick those up. Uh, what else we got? DC Horror Presents The Conjuring number 4, Sinkovich cover. Uh, there's a Ryan Brown movie VHS cover. Those have been selling out previously, so that might be worth taking a look at. All right, Infant Frontier number 6. There's a Puppeteer Lee cardstock variant. I don't remember if I pre-ordered that or not. I usually like Puppeteer Lee Lee's artwork. So, I don't know. That might be worth it. There's no image of that yet. I'll have to look and see if that has been posted on the internet yet. A Nice House in the Lake, number four. This has been a great series. Hopefully, you've been picking it up. The first issue did well, sold out. Goes for more money on the secondary market. Uh, it's been a solid read. A and B cover, both of them are nice. Uh, I pre-ordered both of those. Uh, what do we got here? That's a nice cover by Alex Maliev, Suicide Squad. Get Joker number two. We've got a 
B cover by Fornes. That's pretty cool. I like that too. All right. Let's move on down the list here. Swamp Thing number seven. Man, I love this B cover. Oh, that's so good. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how you don't pick that up. Um, I pre-order pre any Matina cover uh, on Swamp Thing. I just don't remember seeing this. I don't know if the cover was available at the time that I pre-ordered it, but man, that is such a good cover. Oh, that might be one of my favorite covers coming out next week. All right, that should do it for DC. Dynamite Entertainment. Uh, Army of Darkness 1979, number one. You've got a new a new series here, I don't know, mini series for Army of Darkness. I know there's a lot of fans of that. Some kind of cool covers. Man, this cover's crazy looking. Sean, uh, Jason Sean Alexander cover. Saw in the head and half. Man, it's crazy. There is a metal cover of this that I pre-ordered <laughs> through Things From Another World. I've noticed they don't have that available through Midtown. So, yeah, I don't know how many they're going to produce, but, um, yeah, there is. Now, this was not available at the time when I pre-ordered that metal cover. Uh, this is a red tinted cover for $27. It's probably like a 1 in 25 or a 1 in 30, I'm guessing. The regular... Black and white incentive cover. Virgin has sold out on Midtown, so take note of that. Uh, let's see here. Man, that's a nice Derek Chu cover for Barbarella number two. That one's pretty cool. Carla Cohen, she always does a nice job. That one's pretty nice. Um, yeah, I mean, Dynamite Entertainment's known for having some really cool cover artists, but... Uh, you know, usually the reading of the book is not all that fantastic. <laughs> so, uh, Kiss Phantom Obsession number two. Some crazy looking covers here. I mean, this one's kind of cool. The black and white J. Lee. It's a cool cover by J. Lee. Very cool. I'm surprised that's not sold out yet for $13.50. Uh, looks like the one that is sold out is the photo cover. Interesting. That one sold out for $3.59. And this one's pretty nice too. Stuart Sager. All right, a bunch of cool covers. I think I pre-ordered this cover in advance for like $30 or $35. That's just an awesome cover by Mastrazzo. Yeah, he's good. Mastrazzo, I, I got a... I got to believe that the stuff he's been producing, he reminds me the most of Frazetta um, with his images. I don't know. It's just, it's kind of gritty. It's kind of, it's beautiful. I don't know. It's, it's, it just reminds me a lot of Frazetta. Uh, Ian Gist does that for me too. Ian Gist, a lot of his stuff looks like Frazetta too. You can tell he was inspired a lot by that type of artwork. Uh, Canto 3, Lionhearted, number 3. This is from IDW Publishing. I pre-order all the A covers. Uh, Canto is just a great story. It's, you know, it's basically the story of a small hero overcoming great odds. And it's just a continuation of fighting the Shrouded Man, who is the villain in, this, in the storyline. There's also an incentive cover by Igor... Walski, pretty cool cover. I like that one too. Uh, I think that might do it from IDW that I took notice of. Looking at Image now. Uh, was there anything from Image? I don't, I don't think there was. Uh, uh, I guess there's a Stray Dogs cover gallery retailer. Thank you. I, mean, I don't know, the Stray Dogs thing. There's definitely a cult following for that series. People are... Buying every single cover, it's kind of, kind of gone nuts. Uh, the Me You Love in the Dark, number one. It looks like the second print print incentive cover is sold out. I did pre-order that for $20, so I'm glad I did. It looks like it's sold out already for $27 on Midtown. And then you got issue number two out as well. The first issue was pretty good. I liked it. I like Scotty Young's writing. I think he's a good writer. And Jorge Corona is a great artist, so it's, it's a 
pretty deadly combination, the two of those so far. Middle West is a great series. If you haven't read that, I highly recommend picking that up. Uh, Trover Saves the Universe. Um, that's an homage cover, right? Days of Future Past homage. Uh, Marvel. Let's see here. We've got Amazing Spider-Man 73. We're coming up to that issue 75, which I'm sure they'll promote the crap out of with tons of covers. Uh, Conan and Barbarian number 25. Daredevil number 34. I usually pre-ordered all the A covers by Chichetto. Daredevil's a great read. Hopefully you... That's probably the only Marvel book that I consistently buy every month is Daredevil. There's also a David Lopez, Miles Morales cover. That one's pretty cool. And then you've got the Liefeld Deadpool 30th anniversary cover. Uh, Deadpool Black, White, and Blood number two is out next week. Um, I think the A cover is the best. That's a cool looking cover by Shalvi. I like it. I think that's the better of the of the three. Uh, what else? I don't look. I don't read all this stuff. Extreme Carnage Toxin number one. Just another one of these, you know, pseudo villains that came out from Venom. Right? Is this another one of Venom's offspring, or is this Carnage's offspring? I can't. I can't remember. Can't keep track of it all. I used to have his first appearance. I think I sold it a long time ago. I was like, ah, this nothing will ever come of this, and I sold it. I think it's gone up since I sold it. Of course, that's typical. Uh, there's the scan cover. That one's pretty nice. And I think I pre-ordered this for like like $7. The Philip Tan cover. I do like Philip Tan's artwork once in a while. That one looks pretty good. So I think that's like a 1 in 10 or a 1 in 20. Uh, probably a 1 in 10. Kazar, Lord of the Savage Land. I don't know. Who's going to buy that? <laughs> I don't know. Are there a lot of Kazor fans out there that couldn't wait for this book to come out? Somehow, I don't think so. Uh, I know Swaby's been uh, popular. Some of his Virgin covers have sold well. This is one, another one of his. Not sold out yet. $108. It's probably at least a 1 in 100, I would imagine. Shang-Chi movie is coming out. I'm surprised these books aren't selling and doing better, but, you know... I don't know if that's foreshadowing or not. I I will watch the movie when it comes out on Disney Plus. I'm not going to go to the movie theater. I'm in Florida. COVID's a little a little too precarious right now in Florida. So I'm going to I'm going to stay away from large gatherings. I think that's a smart thing to do. All right. I think that's it for Marvel. We'll move on to Independence. Uh let's see. I don't know. Are there any independents that I thought looked interesting? Uh, I mean, it's just a bunch of... There's some new stuff here, but uh, I don't know. Elric. I do like Elric. Elric Dreaming City, number two. I believe I pre-ordered the C cover. That just looks pretty cool to me. I don't know. I like a black and white cover once in a while. That one looked nice, so I, I pre-ordered that one. Uh, Eve, number five. I know that's a Boom Studios title. It's done okay. I, I think the early issues have sold well. <clears throat> I don't know if that's going to continue to be popular or not, but I, I have the A cover on my pull list, so I've been just grabbing all the A covers. So far, it's been a pretty good read. I like it. Uh, what else from Independence? There is a Lady Death in the... That looks like a Godzilla homage. Last book you'll ever read? I doubt that. <laughs> I highly, that title is wrong. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I think there's maybe one more book that... Oh, yeah, Never Never number three. This has been a great series from Heavy Metal. Uh, I'm surprised it's not sold out. The first two issues sold out very quickly. Uh, I, I would imagine most retailers have upped their order for the third issue. So I, I got to believe the print run's going to be much higher on this third issue than the first two. So that first issue is definitely a pretty hot book. I think it sells for about 15 to 20 right now. 
Nine Stones, number one, a new, a new series by Behemoth Entertainment. They typically have low print runs, so you may want to take a look at it. Looks like nothing is sold out, though, right now, so must not be too low. Uh, what else we got here? Search for who? Shepherd Path of Souls, number one. It's a Scout Comics. I do like this B cover. I think it is an incentive cover too for to cover price. So I'm gonna grab that one just in case, you know, just in case. In case it gets hot, you never know. This is an interesting cover. Snelson, number two. That looks like Larry King to me. I don't know. Do I have a good Larry King impression? I don't think I do. Tarrant, Witch of the Rose. Doesn't believe in a lot of clothing. She saves a lot of money. Not, not doesn't have to spend a lot on clothing there. Uh, what else? Is that it? I think that might be it. Yeah, trades are the rest are trades. All right. The other thing that um, I thought was interesting, I noticed somebody posted this on Instagram. Mich I don't know how to pronounce that. Michikwani. I don't know. Michikwani. Whoever that Instagrammer is, thank you for posting this. So Invincible Iron Man number 998, nine, the variant. This was the, uh, I can't remember what variant it is, but I have it in my collection. In fact, I pulled it out right now just to show you that I have it. I have it in raw condition. It's not been graded. I'm pretty sure my copy is a 98. Um, I don't have the regular A cover, so some reason I decided to buy the variant. I'm, I'm glad I made that decision. This sells for way more money than the a, than the regular A cover. Um, I can't remember what that artist is that did that, but it's pretty cool. I, li I like the coloring on it. I think that's why I picked it up, but I don't even think I paid a lot of money for this. I may have paid like maybe 15 or $20 for it. I, I know I didn't pay a lot for it. And it might, might have been read once, maybe. I mean, it's... I looked at it very, very closely. I don't see really any flaws with the book. At least not to the to my naked eye. I don't have the best vision. But with my re even with my readers on, I didn't see too many flaws with it. But right now, if this thing was graded a 9.8, apparently this just sold today for $3,800. <laughs> so this was a confirmed sale on eBay. For thirty eight bucks or thirty eight hundred dollars, yeah, thirty eight dollars, thirty eight hundred dollars. So man, that's a high end book. So this this book is up there with my. I mean, based on that sale today, this book is up there with my X Men ninety four. I mean, my X Men ninety four I think is worth about four thousand in the current grade that it's in right now. Um, I think my copy though is worth way more than that. I'm I'm gonna do another video, just highlighting X -Men, my X-Men 94 book and like trying to get in real close and trying to video, you know, all the little aspects of the book, especially to show you how good of condition it's in. But yeah, I'm glad to have this in my collection. It's just one of those surprises that um, you just don't, I don't know, you can't anticipate, right? There's no way back then that I mean, I remember when this character, Riri Williams, came out, everyone just kind of made fun of it, and no one really took it seriously. But based on these prices right now, <laughs> I would I would imagine you should take it seriously. Um, man, it's just crazy. I'm just, I'm glad I, I'm glad I haven't sold everything. <laughs> I'm glad I still hold on to stuff. So $3,800, that's a big win. Uh, awesome looking book. And yeah, I know I'm going to get messages saying you need to send that in for grading. I probably do, right? It's it's definitely in 9-8 status at the moment. Um, it's in a my light. It's protected. Oh, by the way, I did place an order with E. Gerber today. Uh, the pricing has gone up on a lot of the my, the my lights. So I typically order um, my light twos. So they give you a pricing list, and they've got all kinds. You know, you've got the current, standard, silver, golden age. you got magazine style, all the different sizes, and they give you the dimensions. I typically order standard comic size. 
from the 1970s to 1990s. The current, the current comic size is just a little too small. I, I like the I like them. I like to have a little room in it, especially because some of the books that you buy these days, you know, they'll be maybe be thicker. Maybe they're going to be 48 pages instead of 32. And having that extra space really makes a big difference. And it's the price difference is not much. I mean, on, on an order of 50, it's 25 cents higher. Big deal. On an order of 200, it's it's not even a dollar higher. It's 75 cents higher. I mean, it's it's stupid not to to just get the standard comic size. So I pre-ordered um, an order of My Light 2s. So I do this every like three or four months. Uh, the reason why is... You the minimum order is a hundred bucks, so you can't just order. Oh, I'm gonna do one order of fifty. You know it'll come to like, you know, order of fifty will come to like thirty five, forty dollars. Now you're you're gonna have to order at least a hundred dollars worth. So basically, I order a packet a package of two hundred, my light twos and full backboards, and then another order of fifty. A my light twos with 50 full back boards and that comes to like 108 dollars and then plus shipping shipping will be like another 15 probably I, they send it usually priority mail uh so it'll probably be another 15 dollars or so for shipping so yeah that's how i do it um i try to put most of my books in my light not everything but yeah i mean i buy a lot of exclusives as you guys well know and i i would say if a book's worth at least twenty dollars or more, you probably should have it in a my light. That's my personal feeling on that. So it just preserve. You know, the book is well, well preserved, and you got to be very careful with a lot of comic books these days. Like this is an example. This Ice Cream Man. Um, actually, this is not Ice Cream Man. This is Ha Ha Number Six. So this was a saint. This was a Sanctum Sanctorium comics exclusive. It's done by David Romero. I love the cover. It's beautifully done. It's an awesome cover. It's a black cover. And man, I'm telling you, I can I cannot handle this comic book without gloves. You've got to wear white gloves with this comic book because it will pick up your fingerprint so easy on that cover. Some of the paper they use, uh, this is this one is the one of the worst I've ever seen. I mean, literally, I can't touch the book without putting white gloves on. It's that sensitive. So uh, just be careful when you get a comic book. Really check the paper before you start handling it. Now, a lot of times the fingerprint will you can you know you can lightly wipe it off. It will come off, um, but it, it's you know you got oils. Remember, you have oils in your hands, right? Everyone does. So it's not really good to handle <laughs> some of these comic books with your with your hands, especially not this one. This one is terrible. I mean it it picks up a fingerprint the worst I've ever seen. So I do love this cover. I love it. It's beautiful. But man, they needed to use different paper. The paper on this is so damn cheap. So I don't know. Whoever, Maxwell Prince, I think he's the one that creates Ha Ha, uh, the Ha Ha series. Uh, I don't think he'll ever watch my video, but <laughs> if he ever does, uh, I would definitely tell Image to use better quality paper. That That paper is... Very, very condition sensitive. So keep that in mind if you buy this exclusive. Uh, you better put the white gloves on before you pull it out of the bag. <laughs> all right, guys. Uh, that's it. That's all I had for you on this Wednesday. Make sure you get your books that are coming out next Wednesday, the 8th of September. I will have a live stream tomorrow evening as well. I haven't had an artist on in a while. I need to get one on the show. Uh, I, may, I may be having Jim's Comics come on the show at some point. I've been chatting with him quite a bit recently, and he has expressed some interest in coming on my show, especially since I think he's planning on launching maybe a comic book. Um, he's He's got some ideas in his head, and I think he wants to create his own comic book maybe. A lot of people are doing that on Substack, on Indiegogo, Kickstarter. You see a lot of people producing their own content, creating a comic book. Um, I mean, I think if it's a... A goal you have in your life, why not try it? You know, especially if you've got a really good idea. And I'm sure Jim's comics can get a couple people to draw his book for him. I'm sure he knows some people. So yeah, hopefully I'll be coming up with a date 
where maybe I'll have them on a live stream. And I, I know that that would be very, very popular and be very nice of him to do that. That would certainly help my channel uh, as there are still many people that can't wait to, to see Jim's comics again. <laughs> so I'll keep you posted on that. Um, all right, everybody. Hope you have a great Wednesday. I'll see you soon.